Hey guys, Haley Lane, aka Key Black, here with another episode of Off the Cuff, and I am extremely excited for today's episode because this is the volume, uh, volume number four, where we finally get into the Death Tea saga. If you guys are familiar with the Yu Gi Oh! anime, um, the first episode of the Duel Monsters anime actually is basically a summary of the Cards with Teeth chapter where we first meet Kaiba and some of the key points of the Death Tea arc. But the majority of the context is actually not present in the anime and there's a lot of plot points that get set up in this saga. If you guys have read this, you probably already know what I'm talking about. It has one of the biggest reveals in the manga that we've been waiting for since the beginning, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. The first chapter of Volume 4 actually stars Jonochi rather than Yugi. I find this chapter kind of interesting on the reread because it doesn't actually feel like the same genre of manga that Yu-Gi-Oh! has been up until now. I'm not saying that there was like a huge whiplash or anything, but this chapter actually feels a lot more like an action manga than like the, the horror stuff that we've been seeing so far. It opens up with Yuki and Jinochi coming home from school. On the way home, Jinochi suggests they stop at the arcade. It turns out that pretty much every single game in the arcade has a high score ranked as K-A-I. On the next page, we learn that K-A-I does in fact stand for Kaiba, who the local kids say is not just a Duel Monsters or Magic and Wizards fanatic, but also just an excellent gamer in general. They also reveal that Kaiba is rumored to be working on a secret project, something about the ultimate game, and this kid's expression is like weirdly dark in this panel where he says that. So the kids head off, Yugi's left pondering what what that might have meant until Jinochi goes like, all right, let's do it. Let's try and beat some of this, this Kaiba guy's high scores. Jinochi's not the greatest at games, but Yugi turns out to, just like his other self, be a general expert at games as well. He picks out a fighting game, he picks Bruce Ryu, who's uh, basically Bruce Lee, which I find very funny now that, I've, now that I'm noticing, because I, I mentioned earlier that this does feel more like a, an action manga chapter. Yugi picks the action hero Bruce Ryu uh, and plays a fighting game where he's challenged repeatedly by another person in the arcade. Yugi proves pretty casually that he is in fact a pretty decent gamer in his own right, and beats the guy handily like three or four times in a row until it gets kind of comedically repetitive. Jinochi gets a little bored, he offers to get them both drinks, and uh, Yugi asks for a cola, Jinochi heads off. And in the meanwhile, as Jinochi leaves and Yugi trounces this guy one more time, opposite Yugi on another arcade machine, this dude... <laughs> Hands up, and it's a guy cosplaying Bruce for you, <laughs> and he's apparently not happy about having been trounced many times over by this little high schooler across from him. <laughs> and he's so insulted that he actually beats Yugi to a pulp on the spot and steals his Millennium Puzzle. He breaks out some crazy fighting moves, poor Yugi is like, you know, bruised and on the floor, practically unconscious, and uh, as Jinochi returns and sees the scene of what he just missed, he is not happy about it. I made the comments in chapter one about how Jinochi's expressions really stand out to me. They still do. Early on in this chapter when he's hanging out with Yugi, they're palling around, they're having a great casual time, and you know, Jinochi just has this, this warm quality to his face. I love the way that Takahashi draws his expressions. He's the kind of guy that you just want to hang out with. You want to like give him a hug or a high five or something. And yet at the same time, when he, uh, when he sees what happened to Yugi and one of the other kids points where the guy seems to have gone off to, uh, <laughs> he has a very different expression on his face. Like, that's a very, that's a very badass expression there, Jinochi, I approve. But with Yugi's puzzle firmly in not Yugi's hands, uh, there is no other Yugi that appears this time. And instead, we get treated to pure badassery from Jonochi, who decides to take on the villain of the day on his own. No games this time, now it's a fist fight. The other guy agrees to, you know, duke it out for the puzzle on the condition that they do it while holding knives in their mouths. And so this guy, you know, he's got his, his own trick knife that's going to slide into the hilt as soon as it, uh, it as soon as it moves. But Jinochi says, all right, I'm fine with those rules, but don't put a knife in your mouth because I don't want to have to hold back on punching you in the schnoz. And it is now a close quarters match. We get these really cool action shots where Jinochi's dodging these punches in what's very clearly a tight alleyway. And it's a really tense fight. Jinochi actually gets nicked on the cheek once. But while this guy keeps aiming for his face, clearly just trying to kill Jinochi outright. Jinochi refuses to take his hands out of his pockets. He's dodging all of this, like, you know, hasn't even thrown a punch yet. He says, actually, that each of his pockets holds a promise to his friend, so that's why he hasn't shown them yet. Well, of course, this guy gets infuriated and 
Yeah, there's this really like painful looking panel of him punching Genochi in the gut, which of course leaves his face wide open. Um, and so he's about to land the finishing blow to just punch that knife back into Genochi's throat, which is when Genochi reveals what's in one of his pockets is the now very shaken up can of cola that he got for Yugi. He sprays it in the guy's face. I love this page. The paneling is both super dynamic and just completely hilarious. It breaks up the pacing completely and just kind of brings it to a big Genochi taunts the very now caught off guard Bruce Ryu wannabe before revealing what's in his other pocket, which is... He, I quote, his right hand promised to beat him to a pulp. Genochi shatters the guy's jaw, spits out the knife, and retrieves the puzzle and promises, all right, I'm gonna bring this back to you, Yugi. Only other thing I gotta do now is buy you a new cola. And then it's on the way home from the arcade that a mysterious limousine drives up and invites Yugi and Genochi to hop inside, promising to take them to Seto Kaiba. Mokuba also reveals himself in the front seat here, looking a lot friendlier than he first did, at least for one panel, and explains that his older brother is actually the president of the huge gaming corporation Kaiba Corp. Seto Kaiba himself apparently wants to invite his very best friends to his house to bring them to a very special opening ceremony tomorrow. That secret project that the kids at the arcade were talking about is apparently complete. And while Yugi and Jinochi are understandably a little bit put off by like suddenly Kaiba's being really friendly, Mokuba offers in his brother's stead because Kaiba's apparently exhausted from getting everything ready for this grand opening ceremony, he offers to treat them to dinner. A dinner which very rapidly turns out to be another death game. <laughs> it's Russian roulette with Two of six plates being poisoned, Mokuba's using a little lever on the side to control which plate lands in front of whom. Genochi gets hit with the first poison plate with a panel that's like, oh, I can feel that in my own gut. And with Genochi unconscious and out of the picture, the other Yugi emerges to challenge Mokuba right back for probably the funniest, weirdest rematch. The other Yugi quickly figures out what gimmick Mokuba is using to cheat at this game as well, smashes the bottle that Mokuba's using as the lever, and then random chance allows the poisoned hamburger to fall right in front of Mokuba. The expressions in this chapter are absolutely hilarious. Mokuba is just all over the place. He's, he's this totally, you know, totally overly enthusiastic, overly cocky child. You, you kind of feel bad for Mokuba too when the other Yugi goes, why haven't you cleaned your plate? Mokuba chows down on the poisoned hamburger. It's of course poison, so he falls back. The butlers come to his rescue. Yugi gets the poisoned antidote. And the chapter ends with the other Yugi wondering what the hell this mystery project is that they're supposed to see tomorrow. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and end the episode here because tomorrow is the grand opening of Death Tea. The the amusement park of death. And guys, thank you so much for listening and for watching. I will see you in the next one.